Welcome back. In this video we're going to talk about Mathematica software produced by Wolfram. The theme of this video is that even though math is hard, the clever use of software can make math a lot easier. And this is where you have to be a little bit careful. When you're learning how to do math on a calculator or on a computer, there is usually a startup cost. When learning how to use technology, we have to invest some time to learn how to use the tool. This means that you have to work a little bit harder when you train yourself to use some sort of software like Mathematica. However, once you actually spend that time, what you can do with the software is much more powerful than what you can do without it. Meaning to say, this initial time is an investment. As you increase your skills, you will start to excel in ways that are not possible without the tool. The reason that I want to say this is, prior to this class, it's not really necessary to graph on technology. You can use a standard graphing calculator or even a paper and pencil. But in R3, the graphs are intricate enough and hard enough that it's really hard to visualize this in your mind or on a piece of paper. With a little bit of thought, you can get good at visualizing graphs using Mathematica. To do so, however, you have to understand how Mathematica works, and that's what we're doing in this video. We're going to start talking about Mathematica by, by going back to some times in your understanding of R2 and graphs. So Mathematica, and I'm going to shorthand write it MMA, is really a powerful software with absolutely wonderful graphing capacity. I actually like Mathematica for graphing. That's what I, I would say. That's the go-to tool if I'm going to graph something. We will focus on two graphing commands for uh, sh shapes and surfaces in R3. And these two graphing commands are going to be plot 3D and what we call contour plot 3D. Native Mathematica commands start with capital letters, and we'll see this in a little bit. The difference between these two commands really goes into a difference between what we call explicit functions and implicit functions. So you can think about plot 3D as plotting what we call explicit functions.
and then contour plot 3D plots implicit relations. Okay. In order to understand what we mean, let's look at an example of implicit versus explicit definitions for graphs in R2. And this goes back to your days in calculus. All right. We talked about an explicit function. We say an explicit equation for a function. is one where the output variable is isolated on the left-hand side of the equation and written in terms of the input variables. So an example of this would be the equation y equals x squared. This is an explicit representation of the output in terms of the input. And we used function notation to say, oh, we could actually write the output of this function strictly in terms of the input. And this was explicit because y is explicitly given in terms of x. When you have an explicit representation of a function, you want to think about the plot command. This goes into the plot command in Mathematica. And we'll see this when we boot up the software. On the other hand, an implicit equation is usually reserved for relations and not functions. And this is one where the first and second coordinates of ordered pairs are written in an equation together, but neither one is written as a function or at, in terms of another one. Isolated. And an example of this was the implicit equation for a circle of radius perhaps 1. And you'll see in a second, I'm going to do something really interesting. I'm going to uh, assume that instead of writing x squared plus y squared equal 1, I'm just going to bring the 1 over here. And the reason that I do this is we will later in this class be using this form of an implicit equation, in particular in lesson 14 when we start talking about Lagrange multipliers we'll be using this particular form where we have an implicit representation of input variables equal to a constant. This is kind of a formal, um, general form of an implicit equation. If you compare the explicit representation of your output variable in terms of your input variable, really in the background, all of this has to do with ordered pairs. Here you're looking at the set of ordered pairs x comma y such that the output variable, the second coordinate, is written as the square of the input variable. Okay. So the output is explicitly given in terms of the input. And what's really interesting about this is when you have an explicit representation, this now becomes
a situation where both the first and second coordinates are written on the same variable. In an implicit equation, life is not so easy. When we look at this implicit equation for this relation, it's not a function because it doesn't pass the vertical line test. But we are now looking at a set of ordered pairs where the defining characteristic of the first and second coordinates is simply that they satisfy together this equation. So another way to write this set is x squared plus y squared equal to 1. When you see an explicit representation, when you can't write one of your variables strictly in terms of one of the, of the other input variables, we think about this as being eligible to be plotted using what we call contour plot command. Okay, let's start booting up the mathematical software, Mathematica software, and really take a look at how contour plots can be used to graph planes. Okay, let's boot it up. We're going to go ahead and open Mathematica software. So I go to my applications list, I double click on Mathematica, and I'm immediately offered a, um, a window here. This window is called a notebook. We'll talk a little bit more about this. You can think about this as a blank slate of a, a calculator. So I can type into this. So I can write 7 plus 3, and I can go up into evaluate cells. And this will now say, OK, for input 7 plus 3, I get this. These are This is called an input cell and an output cell, and these are called cell brackets. I don't really want you to worry too much about this, other than just to have a sense of how this works. I'm going to go ahead and save my file to an appropriate folder, and I'm going to call this uh, graphing in 3D. And this is a notebook. It's automatically saved as a notebook through Mathematica. I can also zoom in and out. Perhaps I want to be 125%. Okay, I want to go ahead and graph the three-dimensional plane called the z equals zero plane. And when I think about z equals zero, this is actually a contour plot because z equals zero is not an explicit representation of z in terms of x and y. So here I'm going to go ahead and use the contour plot 3D command. And Mathematica, again, this is a capital letter representing it's a native Mathematica term. Here's the end. I'm going to go ahead and comment my code. And I'm going to say this is please end the contour plot 3D command. All right. I'm going to go ahead and write z equals 0. When I'm using contour plot, I use the double equal sign. Mathematica is going to evaluate the set of ordered triplets and test for truth. And this is what's happening here. This is a logical is z equal to 0. In this case, I need to tell Mathematica the range of x values. So I'm going to say maybe let x run from 5 to negative 5. I'm going to say the same thing for y. So I'm going to say let y run from 5 to negative 5. And then I also need to tell Mathematica, because this is a three-dimensional graph, what my range of z values is. Okay. So what you see here is now a graph of the x, y plane. Perhaps I don't like the style of this graph. One of the really interesting things that Mathematica allows you to do is really quickly change the style. So I write contour style directive. And then I'd like to turn it to blue, perhaps. And I'm going to change opacity. Opacity is the, well, let's just change it to blue first. So here we go, change it to blue. All right, and then you see how it's kind of hard to see through that? So opacity is the ability to see through something. So here I'm going to say opacity, uh, perhaps we say at 50%. OK, see how I can see through it? I could also go down to 2, 20%. Can see through it more. Opaque means I can't see. So the less opaque, the less, the more easy it is to see. And then I can also turn off the mesh if I wanted to do. So I could say mesh false. So now it's a, a mesh there. 
And then the final thing I could do is I could actually say, please tell me where the axis is. So now I'm going to say axis origin. And maybe we want the axis, the x, y, and z axis to all go through 0. See it? OK. So now this is the x, y plane that I promised you we were going to visualize. Could you guess what the equation is for the x, z plane? The x, z plane is the set of all order triplets whose y coordinate is 0. So perhaps if we call this the y coordinate 0, there it is, the x, z plane. And it's kind of hard to see which one's x, which one's y, which one's z, because we haven't labeled them. So maybe we want to go into this and label our axis. And let's go ahead and label them x, y, z. Uh, sorry about that. Um, oh, it's complaining that I don't have an arrow there. Do you see that? Yeah, so now do you see my x, my y, and my z? And I could go ahead and turn the um, change the axis origin so that it's not going through the origin anymore. And you'd see the x, y, and z on the, on the side there. You see it? Here's x, here's y, here's z. For you viewers at home, I encourage you to actually test the right hand rule. Positive x along your index finger, positive y along your middle finger. Oh, look at that. Positive z is directly orthogonal to both of those. OK, let's try one more. Let's do the y, z plane. Could you guess what the equation for the y, z plane is? Yep, you got it. It must be x equal to 0. Let's do all of these together. Let's do the what we call the x, y plane, the x, z plane, and then finally the y, z plane. And then maybe we want to do three colors. Let's go yellow and red. Um, I think it's getting mad at me because, yeah. Um, maybe I can't, I, I know that I can do, one way to do this is to just hack it. So um, one really cool thing about Mathematica is that we have this, what we call a show command. I was it mad about that. Maybe it was that easy. Let's try that. Let's try x equals 0. <laughs> yeah, and let's try, what would we say it was going to be blue? not exactly what I want. Um, if I want to combine two things together, I can do so by simply using show. So show command allows me to concatenate two different graphics on the same axis. Um, so here we go. I'm going to go ahead and go down here, end my show command. So here's my um, end my show command. And of course, I wanted to end my plot3d command there. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this one. And instead of z equals 0, perhaps I want x equals 0. And instead of yellow, perhaps I want blue. And again, blue is capital. Oh, it's getting mad with that particular piece. Look at that. So now I've got my xy plane, my yz plane. And I can do one more. Let's go ahead and just get that third one in there by copying the entire thing over. Um, and maybe we'll call this one red. And we'll do the last axes. Uh, it's getting mad because there's a comma at the end. Look at that. All three axes together. X, Y, excuse me, all three planes. X, Y plane, Y, Z plane, X, Z plane. Right? And you can see that we're using contour plot 3D. All right, that gives you a, a start of graphing in Mathematica. I will not be testing you on these graphs. All I want you to do is be able to visualize what this stuff looks like in R3 and give you a little bit of tools on how to do that. All right, in the next video, we'll start talking about distance formulas in R3. I'll see you in the next video.